Hello and good evening, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us tonight. It is finally here, a chat with the class of 2020. You see all these beautiful faces ready to join us today um, for a frank, honest, open conversation about their school year and um, their plans. So we're excited to get started. I am Jamila Kemp, the founder and CEO of It Takes Two Incorporated. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization based out of Maryland, and we provide scholarships to students that live in single parent homes. We provide youth programs, uh, we host charitable events, and we have a program that provides school supplies for the entire school year. We are all about the youth. Um, our vision is creating tomorrow's leaders today. And one important thing that we must know about leaders is that they have to have a voice and not be afraid to. So this is an opportunity for our youth to share their voice and to lead this discussion tonight. So I am joined by Anthony McDonald. He is one of our Position for Greatness Youth Program members. He's going to be co-hosting this with me. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead here and get started. We like to respect people's time. Now this is open to all of our panelists. Tell us your name, the school you graduated from, and just a couple of fun facts about you. We'll start with Gabrielle in Maryland. Okay, so hi, my name is Gabrielle. I recently graduated from the Baltimore Polytechnic Institute um, in Baltimore, Maryland. And some fun facts about myself, I'm actually a photographer in the um, university I'm going to is Dresden University. And before I was accepted, um, I was awarded second place in the national um, photography contest. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so that was really cool. Um, I actually went to Ghana last year um, for a photographic capstone. And that was like really cool. And I want to go um, visit Africa again and stuff like that. So yeah, that's me. Excellent. Thank you very much. And Rashard? Um, my name is Rashad Ray. I graduated from Friendship Collegiate High School in D.C. Um, 18 years old. I'm a student athlete. I do photography for my cousin sometimes. You know, he does music videos and stuff like that. I don't really travel a lot, but I've been around the country. And happy to be here. Wonderful. Thank you. And Jayla out of Maryland. Hi, everybody. My name is Jayla Bobo. I graduated recently from Friendly High School in PG County, Maryland. Um, some fun facts about me. I actually won Homecoming Queen for the 2019-2020 school year. Um, I was a student athlete all while on honor roll, so kudos to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Bryson, you're up next. Uh, so my name is Bryson. I graduated from Chesapeake Math and IT Academy in Laurel, Maryland. Um, I play basketball and baseball, and I'm going to North Carolina a and in the fall to study biological engineering. And that's a full ride, right, sir? Yeah, I, I received a full ride uh, scholarship to go there. Yeah, that's important. All right. All right, Matthew, out of Maryland, you're up next. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Matthew Coney here. Uh, I graduated from Oxford High School. Um, I'm a student athlete. I hold the record for most goals uh, scored in a year for in a season for uh, lacrosse. Um, I've been in music for eight years. Uh, involved in music for eight years. I do photography. I'm going to be attending uh, Howard Community College for one year and then transfer to Drexel University for um, sound recording technology. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Tamar out of Maryland. Hi, everybody. <laughs> My name is Tamar Brackett, and I graduated from Bladensburg High School. Um, I'm 18. What else? Um, I was also homecoming queen um, for the 2020 school year. Well, 2019 school year. Um, I also have a business and a YouTube channel, and that's it. Okay, that's a lot, girl, that's a lot, thank you. <laughs> Bria, you're up next. Hi, my name is Bria. I graduated from Dr. Henry A. Wise. I'm 18 years old. Um, one fun fact about me is I was a dance teacher's assistant. I dance, I helped to teach, I helped to choreograph. I did a lot when I was the assistant. Um, I'm going to PG 
going in, my major is art, and I'm going in to do two years, and then after my two years, I'm going to transfer. Excellent. Thank you. Deja Lone, you're up next. Hi, I'm Deja Lone. I attend St. Catherine Drexel in, in New Orleans, Louisiana. I am the graduating valedictorian of the senior class. I am also a student athlete, and I attend ongoing to southeastern Louisiana in the fall of 2020. Excellent, thank you. And Jayani out of Maryland, you're up next. Hi, my name is Jayani Livingston. I'm from PG County, Maryland, and I graduated from the Academy of Health Sciences in Largo, Maryland. Um, with that program, I was able to graduate with my associate's degree, so I will be going into college as a freshman, but with basically junior credits. So I'll be able to graduate with my bachelor's degree in 2022, and I'll be attending Howard in the fall. Excellent, yes, thank you. Hey there, Justin, you're up next. All right, what's up, y'all? Um, so I'm actually a graduating uh, college student, recommended to, um, I guess, attend here from a friend, um, and yeah, so I graduated from the University of Pittsburgh um, this past spring with a degree in computer engineering and uh, 21 years old and I guess recently started a uh, recently started a new job a couple weeks ago. So thank you. Justin is one of our panelists, but hey, everybody is here, so why not allow them to share, right? So go ahead, Kelsey. You can go live and, and share that you just graduated as well. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Kelsey. I just graduated from college from Duquesne University, also in Pittsburgh, with um, a major in environmental science and minors in biology, chemistry, and math. So I'm happy to be here. All right. I think we have everyone. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so first up, first question. I know your senior year was not what you imagined at all, right? But how well or not did you adjust to distance learning? And what were some of your challenges? We'll go with Rashad first. Um, really, adjusting to distance learning was very helpful. And, you know, it gave, gave a good alternative. You know, we don't always have to be in school, even in days like on snow days, it gives like alternatives to, you know, being backed up on work. Uh, you know, I didn't really run into many problems only like people's parents and family in the background and stuff like that and like background noise but other than that it went pretty smoothly okay great and Jayla how was how was the senior year for you with the distance learning did you have any challenges did you find it easier at home so I actually disagree I feel as though distance learning was not I did not like distance learning at all. I just, to me, I like to sit in the classroom and I like to learn. I like to see the teacher teaching. I like to take notes on what, and with my distance learning, I only had two classes. So in high school, I left at 10 o'clock a.m. So it was just like, I had one class. I probably had three classes a day. I mean, three classes a week, I'm sorry. So the, it was just a lot. And I really wasn't learning anything. They just assigned us the work. You did the work and you turned it in. So it wasn't really any learning going on. It was just, you get assigned the work and you do it and you got your grade for it. Okay, okay, understandable. Thank you. And Deja, how was it for you? Um, personally, for me, it was a bit challenging considering at my school, it's a pretty small school. So we're very hands-on with each other and we connect well with that, like within our class and with the teachers. And we always have that push and motivation in my school. So moving to like at home learning, it was, it was tough because I didn't have that same push and motivation from my friends. So I had to, you know, find that within myself and it was a struggle, but I got it done. Excellent, that you did, that you did. Anyone else wanna join in and answer that question? If so, just raise your hand and I'll call on you. Bria? Um, the only main problem that I really had from distance learning is my math class because math is just not my subject. And without me being there with my teacher, like she would be right next to me helping me out. And I'm more of a hands-on visual learner instead of like watching it through a video and then trying to, understand it for myself so that was really the main problem that i had 
Um, honestly, I felt as though, I mean, I passed that class with a C, but if I was in school, I would have had like an A or B. Okay. So okay. that was mainly the only problem that I really had with distance learning was that one class. Okay. Thanks for that. Tamar, I'll come back to you in just a second. Gabrielle, did you want to chime in? Yes, I did. So um, distance learning um, for me was, it was kind of 50-50. It was already challenging for me because I was gone most of the year because I had surgery and I just returned. So um, I had a lot of work that I needed to make up and some teachers weren't as forgiving as others. Also, five of, out of my seven classes were AP classes. So we were trying to get ready for the test and the test was changing too. And it, like um, somebody else said, it was basically just um, giving back information. I wasn't actually retaining it, it was, or learning it really. And it was just like busy work. And so it was kind of hard to really focus and uh, motivate us and stuff like that. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, my son, um, he's a hands-on learner as well. So we, we struggled a bit. Now I can write a book. I can't do math well. So I didn't, you know, I, I couldn't help him very much <laughs> when it came to math, but um, he, he did make it through. So I definitely understand those challenges because I experienced them myself. Uh, so thank you all for chiming in on that. Anthony, you have our next question. Okay. Um... So I know we just talked about the distance learning thing and stuff like that. So what are you, um, what do you guys think some ways could be that distance learning could be improved? Like what, what, in which ways do you think distance learning can be improved for you personally? Or for the future coming up, because we don't know what's gonna happen come the fall, whether there's gonna be distance learning or you, you know, students are gonna be able to go back to the classroom. So what would have helped you that could possibly also help someone else as well? Uh, Jayani? Uh, yeah, so personally, I feel as though distance learning can be improved by um, having lessons that are pre-recorded as opposed to lessons that are timed. Because me personally, during the whole quarantine situation, I had one class that was very early in the morning, and sometimes I had difficulty actually waking up and having to log in, and then sometimes I had issues with um, internet and things like that. So just being able to go to it at different times and just depending on different people's schedules, I feel like that would be more convenient, just having it pre-recorded and uploaded so that we can even go back to review it at times. So. Okay, thank you for that. So even for the live sessions, the live sessions weren't recorded? No, they weren't. It was just that class um, either you were there or you weren't, and then that was it. So yeah, that's what my school did it. Okay, so yeah, that's a major takeaway. Thank you for that. Anyone else wanna jump in on how the distance learning could have been improved? Uh, let's go to Matthew and then Bryson. Um, the worst part for me was, like Gianni said, I had to wake up like really early, like, I have I have I had AP um I had AP Calc and AP Physics at seven in the morning. Oh wow! I guess yeah. So and it was back to back too. So it was from seven to eight and then eight to nine. So um the first I'm not even gonna lie the first session I I slept past it. I woke up at like twelve, and I did not even go to class. <laughs> but I feel like if there's like a happy medium between like when like the teacher and the student can mutually agree upon to like actually have the class. I feel like that'll make it easier for a lot of people because I know I'm not the only person that slept past um, class time. I know I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't care. I know I'm not. But um, another thing is that um, I feel, now I feel like my, um, my, my calculus teacher, um, he also teaches a physics class as well. Um, I feel like he made it easier for us when he did, um, he, like how we did his lessons, he would have like the pre-recorded, like he would have a recorded um, lesson for um, what to do. So like if we didn't get it on the first go, because he had to go like, he had to go like back, like rapid fire with classes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, I feel like that. I feel like if all teachers kind of follow that blueprint, it would make it easier for students to actually learn. Okay, thank you for that. And Bryson? <clears throat> yeah, kind of following up what uh, Matthew said, just like, kind of if, if teachers and students, well, really teachers just understood like the whole we're at home thing. So it's like, 
getting up early in the morning just wouldn't really you know kind of work out um kind of I would just get up maybe like five minutes before class and then I might even sleep through it who knows so it was just just stuff like that I mean a lot of the things were recorded so I kind of took advantage of that but um I would say if we could just find like a, a good time for everyone um because I mean people try to do different things some people pick up on work hours or some people just sleep throughout the day so if they could find a a good time for that to uh, kind of work out, then I, I feel like that'd be all right. So now I'm going to speak as a mama, okay? If there's a schedule and you're supposed to adhere to that schedule, you got to get up, right? You got to go to bed. You got to get prepared. You got to set your alarm. You got to get up maybe out of your room and go to the table, right? So I hear you on that. But, you know, coming from a teacher standpoint, I don't know if we have any teachers here. They actually have, you know, they have schedules that they have to follow as well. So it can't be all throughout. So I think this may be a lesson of time management and, you know, self-discipline, right? So that's just my point of view. But this is all about y'all, so I'm going to be quiet. So I'm going to go to Tamar next. <laughs> okay. So the thing that I didn't like about um, distance learning and what can be improved is actually having classes. Like I see you guys are talking about y'all having classes, but I didn't have any um, Zoom classes. I just had work. I didn't, I didn't talk to none of my teachers after the day I left school besides like them assigning me work. So maybe actually having classes because I didn't have not one class. I just had work. Okay, wow. So for those that did have class to actually, you know, see someone, even if it was on, on the screen, did you find that helpful? Like being able to engage at least at that level? You can just do that. Um, well, for me, it was different. Like some, like one class that I had, the teacher was mainly just checking in on us because she actually, like she was one of those teachers that actually cared. So in the Zoom, she would be like, how's everyone's doing? How's everybody's mentality? I hope, you know, we're all going to get through this type. Like, she was really positive. And um, it wasn't Zoom, but we did Google Meets. I don't know if y'all know what that is, but um, we did that. And in the Google Meets, she would, um, she would put up the video that she dropped in Google Classroom for us to watch to help us do the work. And she would be like, y'all have any questions? And then in other Zooms meetings, like my dance Zoom meeting, she literally made us get up and exercise. And it was great. So we had to actually participate in that. Um, the only problem that I had with the Zoom meetings was the timing. Like for me, one of my meetings would be like at nine and then I would have another meeting right after that. And I had to be in time for that meeting. That was the only problem that I really had was the timing. Like you can't expect me to be in one class and then say if that's a grade, then you expect me to be in there on time and say the other class is like kind of dragging out a little bit. I have to be there the whole time in order to get the grade. Mm -hmm. That was the only problem that I really kind of had with uh, distance learning and the, the, the Google Classrooms and all that stuff. Okay, thank you for that. And Jayani, I do see your hand up and that'll be the last one and then we'll move on to um, the next question. So I actually had a similar problem. Uh, I only had an actual Zoom face-to-face -face meeting with one of my classes, and that was a communication class. And I didn't really, for me, I felt like the face-to-face -face meetings were a little bit unnecessary, simply because we weren't really learning. It was just more so her checking in, uh, like Jayla said. And so for my most important class, like anatomy, we didn't really have that face-to-face -face that we would usually have in class. And that's a really hands-on, intense class. And I felt like that would have been more, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Basically, it would have been more helpful if that class would have had a Zoom meeting as opposed to my communications class. Because I felt like that's where I needed the most help. And I didn't really talk to my professor since we left school. So, yeah. Okay. So what I hear everyone saying is those classes that require a more, a more hands-on approach, there should have been an in-person meeting or some sort, or maybe a one-on-one -on -one with the teacher. Is that a fair statement? And everybody can not yes. wave your hand. Okay, excellent. All right, yes. so next question. I wanna talk about graduation now. I've seen a lot where some schools did some things and some school systems didn't do anything at all. So can you please share your ideas on how you would have liked for graduation to have been handled. And we will go to Dejalone. 
So it was a big topic in my class, of course. Um, we, we, our school is very big on tradition. So graduation, of course, is really huge. It's one of the biggest accomplishments in our senior class. So one of our best suggestions was to host it even at a park or a football field where it's open for the public and you can invite your family while social distancing at the same time. We also spoke at how like you can only have certain a certain number of students to come at this at a certain time so where it won't be as filled or as packed to where families can still social distance while still celebrating and congratulating their child and student. Thank you for that. Uh, let's go to McCall. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Are you there? Hello. Oh, there we go. It's hey Mikhail. There. It's Mikhail. Mikhail, sorry. <laughs> what are your thoughts about right? Um, oh, I wrote mine down, but I said, like, just to sum it up, I said we could have, um, we could have still did, like, my school, I mean, I don't know how it would work, I have a big, I go to a big school at a high point, well, I graduated from high point, so it was, like, a lot, and I think we had the, um, one of the largest classes in PG County, so, um, I think, I've seen some stuff on, like, social media, where they sat outside and had chairs, you know, split, and, like, you know, to still incorporate, you know, social distancing and stuff. But I've seen uh, they, they either split it up by like last name. So it'll be like different kind of, you know, sessions or something like that with the last names. And then they'll have like, this, and they still got the diplomas. So it's still a graduation, but it just wasn't everybody at one time. Right. Okay. And it could have did that, something like that. Okay. And you weren't here at the top of the call, but just tell us who you are. You, you already told us where you graduated from, but share with us a fun fact about you. Um. Hmm, what can I say? Oh, well, I'm Mikel. I'm 18. Uh, I'm the only boy of like. <laughs> let me see. I got a lot of sisters, like eight or nine sisters from my, my mom and my dad. And I play basketball. And I'm going to uh, Virginia Union University. In fall. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Anyone else want to hop in on this graduation conversation? Jayla? Yes. Okay, so I actually have a lot to say about graduation because I just feel as though for PG County, like I've seen a lot of other schools have actually had their diploma. I don't even have my diploma yet. I don't have anything. We don't know when our diplomas are coming. But I just feel as though as far as graduation, I had a surprise drive-by graduation celebration. So I feel as though if we all can meet up at our school or we can meet up at, at one location everybody just drive by see your teachers or see everybody just one last time because march 13th was my last day of my senior year i probably will i probably won't see those teachers ever again so it's just like i feel as though we can have a small drive by graduation honk your horn hey y'all we graduated we finally made it and just something small and simple like that it will just complete seal the deal that we can't handle graduation but this is the best that we can do you got your diploma you graduated right okay thank you and Richard, what are your thoughts? Um, personally, you know, I accepted that, you know, we couldn't have an in-person graduation. So I, mean, I like my graduation. I like the alternative, you know, they put our diploma up, put a picture, put a picture of us and our family and just like give a little collage to, you know, show the memories that we had. But, you know, overall, I like the alternative for what they could have done. They did their best, you know, they poured, they poured out their heart into it so they, and they gave effort. So, you know, I could, I'm happy with what they did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. I, I personally would and yeah, everything. So I'm fine. Really. Okay. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Uh, last call for conversation about graduation. Bria? Um, well, one, I didn't like, my school didn't do anything. Um, my parents did the same thing for me as they did for Jayla. They threw me a surprise drive through graduation, which like it made me, I was really emotional during it because you know, this is like a hard time that all of us are going through. Like, it's really unfair that we had to go through this. Um, I haven't received my diploma either. I don't know if I'm going to be getting it. I honestly, I do not know, but it would have been nice if I, my school would have came up with something because like literally we came in to get our Catholic gals and that's the last that I heard from that. 
Okay. So I really don't know if they're going to, I mean, it really would have been nice. Like, um, I think his name was Matthew said, like, I've seen a lot of different states off of social media, like they were doing different things for their schools. And I'm like, dang, like my school couldn't think of anything. Mm -hmm. So that's my perspective on it. Honestly, like I've accepted it that, you know, I'm probably not going to get a graduation, but the fact that my parents threw me something made me feel a whole lot better. Yeah, I agree. And I'm sorry, I know that I can't do anything and I know my sorry doesn't do anything, but I'm sorry that you all didn't get a chance to experience that. Okay, um, yes, Bryson, and then we'll go on to the next question. So, yeah, so uh, for me in the whole graduation situation, um, I really kind of like spent my last few weeks just trying to figure out different ways that we can kind of get it done. Um, and especially since my school was really small, um, I felt like, the communication um, between like parents, teachers, administration, and students was just like really lacking when it came to the whole graduation situation. Because at one point we didn't even know if we were going to be able to get our cap and gowns. Um, and then we wanted to know if we were going to be able to get our diplomas and everything. So like um, a lot of other parents, like my parents went all out and, um, you know, through this big surprise, not, it wasn't a surprise, but through this big uh, drive-by graduation for me. Um, so that kind of made me feel better um, about the whole situation. But for me, I was just wishing that the whole communication would be a lot better when it came to this uh, situation when it came with the graduation. Okay, thank you all for being very honest. I definitely appreciate that. Anthony, over to you. Okay, so I know we talked a little bit about um, how we felt in general about distance learning, but specifically, what were some positive takeaways from the experience of distance learning? Primarily positive. <laughs> Go ahead, Tamar. Okay. My positive thing about distance learning is that I couldn't technically get uh, um, half a day because I needed to um, because my they, they wouldn't consider my business a like job. So I like that I was able to work on my business, which is what I actually want to do. I'm not interested in school whatsoever. So I was happy that after I was done my class, because I got I got, I went to a late school, so I got out of school at 410. And then by the time you get home, it's like five o'clock. So it's so late and I'm just tired. So I was happy that I was able to work on my business in my future while also learning so that was a plus for me absolutely i would say so as well she was in the books and making money okay <laughs> all right anyone else want to share any positives from this experience there's always lessons learned in everything that we do so i'm hoping you're able to take away some lessons from this experience we'll go to bria then we'll go to Jayla. Um, one thing for me that I definitely was able to take away was I was comfortable the whole time. Like I was at home in my own space in my room and comfortable clothing. I was able to work at my pace. Like that was definitely a win for me. Not being at school. Like I have no problem with school, but sometimes I do not like being in that building. So I was definitely very appreciative of the fact that I was able to be at home and work in my own space. Okay, Jayla. Um, some positive things that I took away from distance learning is that, so my mom is an assistant principal in the county, so I knew a little, a little bit what was going on, so for my mom, I wouldn't know most of the stuff that I didn't know, and also, at first, I didn't, I couldn't adjust to it, but I'm just like, well, on the bright side, you have one class, Jayla, so you go to your one class, you have all this free time to do what? learn something new, do something new. Like it was just a lot that you could possibly do that you couldn't do while you were in school actually. Like more hours work. I got so many more hours at work. I got a new job. So it's just like that took, and that was a really positive um, outcome from that. Okay, thank you. And Matthew, did you have any positives in this experience? Um, mainly like having more free time to do what I, what I actually wanted to do outside of just school. Like as soon as, like as soon as I took the AP test for AP Calc, I was like even during that time frame, I was really doing like other things. Like I was doing my um my other hobby, which is customizing shoes. I was um I was out taking pictures. Uh, like I was also doing like modeling stuff with my friends, 
even though yes we were still socially distancing i wasn't trying to spread nothing um <laughs> Like I was like I still had time. Like I felt like I actually had more time to do other things and still able to attain I'm a good like a great grade in my class in my classes and still actually do what I felt was a pretty good job on the AP test. So Okay. Did you get your results back yet? Oh um, no, not yet. They haven't okay. put them in. Okay. And we'll do one more. Uh Gabrielle, any positive from this experience? Um I would say um, I got I got closer with my mom. She's a pre-K teacher, so I was helping her with the distance learning, and because she didn't really know what was going on. Um, also, just like everybody said, the free time I just got to decompress because even being in the school building, like especially if you have like a hard time in high school, can just be very stressful. And the fact that you're like comfortable and um, in some instances, you get to study and work at your own pace. It kind of gives you some freedom and also kind of gives you like a glimpse of like what college is like because you kind of schedule your own time and how, like trying to get your work done with by a spe specific time. So that's what I liked about it. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next question. Um, what advice would you give other students that may have to continue distance learning in the fall? Let's go to Asia Lone and then Jayani. Um, I would definitely tell anyone that has to go through this to just keep themselves motivated. Like find your routine and stick to it because that's definitely what's going to get you through it. You know, some days it's going to be harder than others to get up and actually do work, but it's all worth it in the end. So my one takeaway is just definitely stay motivated. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, yes, I agree with uh, Dave Janae, I believe. Yes. Uh, to stay motivated and also procrastination is a big thing for me. So if you know that you're a really bad procrastinator right away, like as soon as your teacher assigns it, because you'll know that you're going to put it off until the last minute and that you can use your free time to do something that you really enjoy. And then with all this time at home, like you can actually really like start new hobbies and things like that. So try to use your time to your advantage to do what you like and schedule things uh, that fit your life. So, okay. How many procrastinators do we have in the building? Cause I'm a procrastinator. I'm sorry. But you know what? We work well under pressure. We get things done and they're awesome, right? So I'm not going to promote being a procrastinator. Take Jayani's advice and just get the work done. But I'm right there with you. Um, I'm sorry, who had to? Yes, Gabrielle, go ahead. And then Jayla. Um, I would suggest um, as much as you can, like create a routine. Because um, especially with a lot of uncertainty, that's when your brain starts to do a lot of things. Like I know that my mood wasn't as great, like especially with all the uncertainty. So just creating a routine can help a lot because you're just like, oh wait, I need to do this, I need to do that. And also make sure you do self-care and call your friends like with homework. It makes it so much better. Like when um with my friends, we have most of the same classes. So whenever we had work we would just do it together and that would just make it go by quick and even when it wasn't it was just fun to catch up and just laugh and it was kind of like old times a little bit so i suggest that that's good that's good richard i'm sorry jayla um go ahead jayla and then we'll go to richard and then we'll hop on to our next question so for me i would just the advice i would give people who have to continue this learning is to just keep going like I know I felt so defeated at points. I'm just like, I cannot believe my senior year ended like this. Still to this day, I still can't believe it, but I accepted it. But I know it's different because people have to go back to high school during this. So I know that it can, it's going to be trying times if they do tell high schoolers that they do have to go back to distance learning next year. So all I just say is stay optimistic. Like hard times don't last forever and just stay positive and just always try to keep yourself motivated in some type of way because like I said, bad times don't, I mean, they might say, oh, well, you get to go back to regular school in January or something like that. So it's just always good to stay optimistic and positive and just keep going to class too, because um, sometimes you 
you just get caught up and stuff and just forget about like, oh, we on a break or nothing. No, you're still in school and make sure you still do your schoolwork and all of that. All right, thank you. And Richard, and then we'll hop on to our next question. Um, some advice would be like, become cool with like your administrators and teachers and people like that are higher up and make big decisions in their school. Cause like personally for me, I like, I had problems with one-on-one, one-on-ones with teachers. Now we're struggling in certain subjects and stuff like that. And it would be the same situation for other kids, but they wouldn't speak up. So I found a way to talk to my administrators and now they had after hours, tutoring sessions on Zoom and stuff like that. So I would just say, become cool with your administrators. They'll help you do it. Uh, check on your friends, like, you know, they see if they need help with that question or with that assignment. Uh, they need help with that video. Uh, more social distancing, but if they're like, you know, y'all that close, y'all can still, you know, find some way to meet up or something like that, but that's not for everybody. But yeah, that's not. That's good. That's a good one. You know, getting close with your administrators, that's, that's really good because they're there ultimately to help you the best way that they can. So if they don't know you're struggling, they can't necessarily help you. So thank you for that. Um, over there to you, Anthony, our next question. Okay, so in your opinion, what do you think the future of education would look like or could look like? Let's Can you repeat that, please? Oh, I said, in your opinion, what do you think the future of education could look like or would look like? And let's go to Matthew for that question. Now, can I ask, like, is this related to, like, what's going on, like, right now with, like, COVID? Yeah, so let's, yeah, so let's talk about the fall. Let's talk about August what or, or early September. What do you think education is going to look like? A lot of the leaders are trying to figure this out, but what are your thoughts? Um, I do, I have noticed that, like, there are some schools that are doing hybrid, um, they're doing hybrid education, so, like, for college, mainly i know they're doing um i know they're doing where where they would have students still come in on board on like room and board and then they're going to have them leave like halfway through the year to go back to home i don't understand how that works but oh. they're doing it like that okay high school now for high school um now these are schools that are, i know like within my area that i heard news from from my other friends that they're going there i'm not I, now my school isn't like that Okay. But um, but for high school, um, I feel like distance learn. I feel like distance learning. I feel like it's going to really affect like um, like school. I mean, like not necessarily just school, but like athletics for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um, like a lot of seasons are probably going to be canceled again. Um, I feel like education for um for high school is like also is going to be um. It's going to put a lot of stress on people, I know, because it's going to be something that they're not really that familiar with either, especially going into their senior year out of all years to do it. But I also feel like it's also going to be a positive in a way that they have more time to do like apps, um, like applications. They're going to have more time to do like other things that they enjoy. They might find new things about themselves they never had before. Like that's what I took from this entire experience in general. Like I, I got to uh, connect with my family more. Um, like we were on, I was on calls, like talking to people I haven't talked in like years. So. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, it was an experience that I feel like it had it had his it had his ups and downs. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. And Deja Long, what are you all doing down there, or or what's happening with the plans, and what do you think it looks like for Louisiana? Um. Well, I know a lot of the schools down here in Louisiana are going to reopen in the fall. I do know that like the campuses, like um college campuses, they will be social dis distance, of course. Um. I've heard word that in the spring, it'll go back to online learning for some schools, but they want to start us off in the fall. I'm not too sure about how that's going to work, but hopefully we'll be able to get back to some type of normal living, but that's as much as I know. Okay. Anyone else want to share their thoughts on what this upcoming school year will look like? Yes, go ahead, Jayla. And then Gabrielle. So um, I'm kind of 50-50 about it. So at my school, I'm going to Morgan State in the fall. So like Matthew said, 
we'll be going to school on Ruben board. So, and then they gave us the option of staying on campus before, I believe it's before Thanksgiving break. So I just feel like as an incoming freshman, it's going to be kind of hard because you're so used to, oh, well, I'm on college, I'm in college campus, and then up and just, nope, everything's moving back to computer. So if you're going to do something on the computer, keep it on the computer or just don't do it at all. Because it's like kind of confusing because we don't know how college works yet. So we don't know how, we already know that the, the, the um, I'm sorry, you all. The journey from high school to college is pretty rough already. So this just as it makes it 10 times worse because it's just like, you just don't know. You just don't know. But as far as high school, elementary school, I'm, I just feel like it's going to be kind of harder because I know everybody can, I just, everybody just can't learn on a computer. Everybody can't. And it's just some subjects you just cannot teach on a computer either. So it's going to be kind of hard for people to grasp that if they keep doing it. But it's also a good thing because they're used to it. Like they they used they had to do distance learning to end their school year out, so they already know what the protocols are going to be once school opens up in the fall. Okay, thank you for that. And Gabrielle, and then we'll move on to our next question. Bryson, I'm sorry, did you want to okay. check time in too? Yeah, I'll, I'll go after Gabrielle. Okay. okay. Um, so I'm just going to touch on like lower grades because uh, my mom, like I said, is a pre-K teacher. And I know she has a strong stance about pre-K and she's saying, oh, they need to be at school because, you know, that's when they're doing a lot of running around. They're learning their, like, um, how to write their name, learning, like, counting and stuff like that. And I've been seeing her, like, work with the camera and everything and doing the Zoom calls, basically. And she's kind of saying it's hard and, like, Sometimes the kids are unfocused and now their parents have to be there. It is also good because parents have to be more involved in how their child is learning and what their child is learning. Um, in regards to um, college, like um, most of y'all said, it's probably going to be hybrid learning. Um, I'm going to, I'm kind of not confused, but um, I need kind of more clarity because I'm going to be an art major. I'm going to be a photography major. So that's, a lot of stuff I don't feel like it'll be best to learn that mostly online even though it's like Photoshop and stuff but I like to see the teacher and like practice on subjects and stuff like that so like after Thanksgiving when we're probably not going to go back it's kind of uncertain about how um effective my education is going to be in the future okay Thank you for that. And I appreciate you talking to us about the lower grades because it's hard for them. They, they're supposed to touch and feel and explore and do this and do that. So it's definitely right. going to be a challenge for them. Okay, Bryson, go ahead and then we're going to hop on to our next question. Yeah, so I would just say, um, I guess the future of learning, like this provides maybe an alternative um, for some learning environments and situations, uh, especially like colleges. So um, like people mentioning the hybrid thing. So I know like for A&T, um, they'll have like some students won't even step foot in the classroom. Like they'll be able to be out there in their dorm rooms, um, taking online classes and stuff like that. So I mean, for some people that's cool. Um, it provides them an, an alternative um, if they don't wanna just be able, have to get up and go to different classes in the, uh, throughout the day. And it, it did force a lot of teachers like, from conversations with my mother, um, cause she's an assistant principal. So like it, it forced her and a lot of other teachers to become more technologically um, like sound and versed. Um, so I don't know, I think it'll, it'll, it'll accelerate this whole technological wave that we're trying to go on. Um, so I think it, it'll, it'll just make everything a lot more technologically focused um, and kind of for people to catch up really. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. Um, even getting prepared, even for the younger students as they go through, they're going to need that experience when they do get to college because some, you know, some classes are online and um, we just have to learn how to kind of shift. That's been the, the mantra this season. So we're going to talk a little bit about entrepreneurship. And Tamar, I'm going to send it to you first, but is there anyone who is not going to college? And if not, what are your plans? Okay, so I am not going to college. And as I mentioned, I do have my own business. 
Um, my plan is to just continue to run my business and expand and grow. I also have recently got into like social media management. So I am running one business account other than mine. So I've just been exploring different things that I can do that will help my business and grow my business as well as help other people business. Because okay. I'm like all about starting a business and like being your own boss because I think it's really important. Okay, excellent. Got a quick question for you on the social media management. Is that its own business as well outside of your boutique? Yes. So I didn't really make it a business yet. Just somebody asked me if I was interested in being their social media management manager. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, okay. I mean, I, we all know about social media. So it's like, it's not really that hard. And with certain people starting a different business, your business might not always be something that you're interested in. So you can sell hair and not be interested in hair just because that's something you want to invest in. But so you can have someone else run it, someone like me run it for you, and you'll still make a profit. Do y'all hear this business woman? Okay, well, you let me know once you have the official social media management business going so I can hire you as an independent contractor so that you can get your business affairs. And Ms. Valencia is the entrepreneurship queen. She is a serial entrepreneur. Um, so yes, so you just let me know whenever you're ready, we can have that conversation. Anyone, okay, I would. <laughs> anyone else? Oh, quickly, share, shout out your business. What's your social media handles and how can people connect with you? Oh, everything is just Shop Tay Taylor. So shop and it's T-A-Y, T-A-Y-L-O-R. And I just sell bracelets and other accessories. And my website is Shop Tay Taylor, Facebook and Instagram. So... Okay. Do me a favor and uh, put that in the chat so everybody could grab that. And everyone, please, 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 please support her. I know, young men, you may have some, some, some girlfriends or moms or aunts or grandmas that you want to buy it for. So definitely let some more. Uh, excuse me. Let's support Tamar. Any other entrepreneurs? I know we have some photographers out there. Are you all looking to take that on to be an actual business, Gabrielle? Yes, yeah, so um, I am starting a business. I'm going to actually start several businesses. Um, so one is going to be my um, photography brand. Um, my On Instagram, it's photography by Gab F. I'll put it down in the comments. But I'm also planning on, in the future, creating a, a media company or, well, like a media light company called um, um, Black Girl um, Media. And so it's going to mostly focus on um, kind of showcasing Black women's art, whether it be film, photography, art, you can buy commissions. Um, I want to partner with other Black businesses and everything. And so if somebody wants to and um, wants to kind of like learn how to love themselves to love themselves more hair packages that um, we can sell to you or it could be like a monthly subscription to kind of help you promote yourself and so you can know your inner beauty um and your inner um kind of just like wealth and everything so i've just been mostly fascinated um and like interested in promoting black women because i see a lot of my friends and even myself in my mom and grandma like go through a lot of stuff and i don't want to see as many black women kind of rattle themselves or go through a lot that we don't really need to go through because a lot of people don't really think about us as much okay excellent well when you launch please let me know as well and i'll be happy to support you so thank you all okay excellent excellent all yeah. right so i'm sorry was there someone else who wanted to share if they're not going to college and what your plans are Okay. All right, and Anthony, we're gonna go ahead and shoot it over to you. Okay, so um, one thing for me that I'm a little worried about when I do get into college, because I'm in the 11th grade right now, is the application process. So is there, for the people who are attending college, are there any tips or any advice you would give to people who are applying to college? 
Thank you for that. We'll go to we'll go to Bryson. I'm going to call on. I'm saying it wrong. McCall, McCall. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, go ahead, Bryson. So for the whole for the whole uh, application process, like for some people, it could be really overwhelming. But for me, like what my whole strategy was, um, so at around like the midway of 11th grade, towards the end of 11th grade, I kind of made an Excel spreadsheet, um, listed out a lot of the colleges that I really wanted to apply to, and kind of put them in tiers of like um, the ones I consider the most uh, maybes and then not so reallys, and then just kind of review the applications and set a goal for every week, like every week you want to apply to two to three um and then also like a lot of i know here so a lot of the churches around this area they'll actually have some lock-ins where you can go in do your applications and they'll pay for them because i was sitting here paying for all my applications and that fee was pretty uh pretty hefty and then um i was also getting help with my essays so having having multiple people review your your essays um and little questions goes a long way um and then i know the lady that helped me with it she's only in california but till this day like she'll still send me different information she'll ask me about um if i need help with interview questions and stuff like that so just just kind of set a goal um and have a good time frame for when you want to do everything that's a very good tip thank you very much um mccall can you hop in there on the college applications process any tips you want to share <clears throat> Did your volume go down, Jamila? We can't hear you. Okay, go ahead. We can hear you. Okay, we'll come back to him. Jayani, you want to hop in? Uh, yes. So for college applications, you said you're in the 11th grade, so I would say that you should have at least two teachers picked out now that you can get a good recommendation letter from, because that is so important to go to them early, because let me tell you, in late September, early October, everyone is bombarding these teachers, and you will wait a month or so before you get a rec your recommendation letter in. So go to your teachers as early as possible, and then also, um with your letters that was a big thing for me uh kind of create a template that you can reuse because writing different essays for different schools it takes a lot of time and so just having one that you can kind of reuse and customize for each school is a big time saver and then also looking out for just on-site admissions for different schools that you want to apply to that is a great way to uh, get acceptances, and also it saves you a lot of time. Uh, I know Richard, I believe he said that there were a lot of application fees for most of on-site admissions. Um, they will usually take your application on spot, or they'll give you an application fee waiver that you can use online. Then they also come off so it's really helpful and. I think my last tip would be, um, you know, don't really stress or like overwhelm yourself with college applications because this is where you're going to spend your next four years. It's where you're going to basically form your adult self. So keep it in the way for your future and the rest of your life. So, yeah. Thank you very much. And did I see a hand up? Um, did I miss someone who else wanted to chime in on that? Go ahead, Bria. Um, one tip that I would say when it comes to college applications is not to do it by yourself. I say that because when I was filling mine out, my um, I kept having to go to my mom a lot because some of the questions I wasn't sure what the meaning was. So I definitely recommend not to fill it out by yourself, like have a teacher or a parent or someone that's been through this before to help you out. That's definitely one thing that I wish I had someone to tell me, because like I said, like a lot of those questions and a lot of the things that they were asking for, this is my first time doing, so I, I honestly didn't know. So that's just one thing that I would give to someone as advice. Okay, wonderful, thank you. 
and Jayla, and then we'll go on to our next question. Um, so for the college application process, I know for myself that during my high school career, I really didn't get the up top grades, if that makes sense. Like my grades were not the best. So I kind of beat myself up about it. Like, oh, I'm not going to get accepted in any colleges or I'm not going to do this. So I waste my time. So some advice I would give to people is just like, just because you didn't get it this time doesn't mean don't try. Like I, I tried and I got accepted into like, I want to say 15, 16 schools. And I didn't expect that when I got to my senior year, I'm like, oh my gosh, my senior year, I want to go to college, but nobody's going to accept me. So it's just like, I just say, try your hardest. Don't ever just settle less just because you think that you can't do it. Because I know some people out there who probably had the same grades as me. It's just thinking, oh, well, my grade's not good. So why try? I still say, just try, like at least try. The worst they could say is no. They say no, go to the next one. Keep doing it till you get the answer that you want. Absolutely. Those are great, great tips. Okay, so we're going to hop into this next question. And it's a little sensitive, but um, it's, it's a conversation that needs to be had. Uh, would anyone like to share their thoughts or feelings about, you know, what the, the social injustice, the, the racial issues, the police brutality, excuse me, that's happening right now? How do we change the narrative? How do we, how do, we do things differently? as adults, we're, we're looking really from you all to give us some feedback on how you all see it, what advice or, or just sharing your thoughts on this subject. Anyone wanna go? Okay, go ahead, Bria. And then Jayla and then Gabrielle. Um, honestly, it's very sad to see that this has been going on for so long. Like when I was growing up, I knew that racism was, racism was a thing, but I didn't realize how heavy it was in America. I didn't realize how much it was happening and how often it was happening until everything literally blew up. And honestly, it should never have, it, it, should, it should not be here at all. Like if you look at other countries and to see how, how they're living their lives and how everything is going, they are perfectly fine. There is it's it's little racism, but it's not as heavy as it is. And then considering that it's in police, like the police force, police are supposed to protect and serve, not kill and look be looked at as uh monsters and whatnot. Like honestly, it's crazy. It it the fact that it's even happening and the fact that protesting and trying to, you know, get the message out, I mean it's doing something, but it's not doing enough. It's like I feel as though it's gotten to the point where they're kind of ignoring us in a way. But the fact that it's, it's so much, like it's so many, like on all the states we're protesting and other countries are protesting to help us. Like at what point are y'all going to actually listen and make a change? So for me, it frustrates me, it angers me, it saddens me because it's like people are still dying. People are still dying because of this. Like it's honestly ridiculous. Like, what, what do we need to do besides what we're doing now for them to hear us? Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's, that's my take on it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Jayla, then Gabrielle, and I would like to hear from some of the young men on the call as well. Are you there, Jayla? So I take it as for a long, long time. It's just my parents have to experience that. And why now 18 have kids and they have to grow up. Uh, I feel as though as a black woman, I've, as since I was a child, I've always had a target on my back. I've always felt as if, well, well, let me not just do this because I don't want them to think, oh no, especially being dark skin. I just feel like it's just a different, like different battles that I have to fight that some people just may not have to fight as well as George Floyd, it breaks my heart because I was raised by a black father. I have black brothers, I have black sisters, I have black uncles, I have black teachers. So it's just like, it breaks my heart because it could have been anybody. He, he, was a, he was a son, it's eight he, was a, he was a father, he was somebody's uncle, just got killed by the hand of the police. And I just don't know how they can sleep at night knowing that they just took somebody's life like that. And there's just no repercussions. Like, Okay, he got charged. He got charged, but is he going to jail? Breonna Taylor's people who killed her, are they locked up? No. So it's just like the justice system keeps failing black women every day, black men every day. And it just really breaks my heart to see that 18. So I just hope that when I have kids and they 
18 years from now, I'm taking them and they're going into the world themselves as an adult that it may be a little bit easier because I know racism, if it was there 400 years ago, something can be changed, but it's just like, I would just hope and pray that my kids don't have to go through the racism that we see today or get killed by the hands of the police as well. Thank you. Uh, Gabrielle, did you want to chime in? Um, yeah. So ever since second grade, I went to this freedom and democracy school. So since second grade, like they taught us about slavery, civil rights movement. I was in plays, um, highlighting, um, black leaders and the struggles of black people. And it's very important that especially like white people, especially that we, that they educate and we educate ourselves about not just the bad, but also the good. Um, like a lot of black kids have to learn the reality so, so young that could possibly be in danger. But white kids have the luxury like to not have to learn about that. Like I went to a private school, predominantly white, and I remember I walked in like straight from my um freedom and democracy school and this this was february black history Month. we were learning about slavery i had to educate most of my classmates more than what the teacher was and this was sixth grade and also i had to go to my history teacher say oh are we having a black history month celebration because i, I was used to that and he was like oh, like, I didn't realize that and everything. Like, yeah, we definitely need to do more and everything. And I remember, like, a year or two later, they brought in a Harriet Tubman impersonator um, person, um, pretty much. And even then, people were kind of making fun of her and everything. And there were multiple instances of just ignorance, mm -hmm. which were unsettling. And I also feel like in order to respond to most of this, I feel like a lot of the Black community needs to be unified because there's a lot of places where we are broken and it is, and the purpose was to was and is to um break us and to not let us come together and be as strong as we were because that's why in the past you have broke us up and everything and a lot of people they broke up families and everything because we are stronger as a group and i just really feel like we need to do that in order to fix things because they are scared of us and they're scared of our power and they're scared of our possibilities. And we just need to show them that we are capable of countless things. We brought so much culture to the world. And even though it's, um, it seems I want to touch on, touch on this, that there's not as much, like, not that much racism in other countries. I like, there like even is and stuff like that because they go to like a lot of countries, I remember, and like in China, they wouldn't, um, they think that we're dirty and stuff like that. So it's just very disheartening and stuff. And I had to talk to my mom because it was weighing heavily on me. And it just points where I just didn't want to get out of bed because I'm just like, it hurts knowing that when I walk outside, somebody may see me as a threat or somebody sees me as stupid or less than or things they can take advantage of me just because of my skin color. And the fact that I have to live with that for most of my life, if not all, you know, so. Well, thank you for that. I think you provided some, some real tangible ways and it's all about education and diversity and inclusion and having that conversation and us supporting each other and pulling each other up and not tearing each other down. You're right. I mean, we are better together. Um, that's kind of the, the mindset of it takes too. We got to come together and, and do more. So thank you for sharing your thoughts. Now I want to turn it over to the young men and I know we're over time, but it is what it is. It's an important conversation. We're going to continue the conversation. So let's first go to Matthew and I would like to hear from all of the young men on the line, even if you're not a panelist. So Justin, Anthony, please chime in uh, if you would like to do so. So let's go ahead and go to Matthew. Um, where do I start with this? So for the, like how to change the narrative, really, we have to, and I agree with, I agree with Gabrielle on every, on every part of her, um, of her, of her response to the question. I do believe that we have to 
we have to continue we have to continue to educate our own people about our history like there's a lot of people that didn't realize that reconstruction existed and that was the greatest period for african american for african americans um we were able to like during that time of reconstruction like poor black people and poor white people were able to protest and get legislation done that actually benefited bo benefited both parties a lot of people don't know that there was a time that we thrived um like even in reconstruction we had um we had caucuses like that were mac like filled to the brink with african americans we had african american politicians in government like this that was literally the greatest era for us um and and for black wall street um we were thriving at one point obviously we all know what happened that was also the tulsa massacre um that's that's an, that's another sad thing to talk about but i feel like the narrative how to switch it we have to we have to really um teach the youth um it's kind of it's kind of difficult to try and teach older people who had to who have had to experience that firsthand especially like my grandmother i don't really talk to her about that stuff in my opinions on it because i know like some some stuff is just too much for her cuz she's had to experience that like herself so i don't really do that so i feel like if we prioritize like who we try to teach these things to and on top of that i do believe that there are things that are broken within our own community is that is that necessarily our fault no i do believe that the government the government planned this to happen right this is 400 years of legislation that have been made in order for us to be a broken community so i would never blame us for what has happened to a, to some degree now now i do believe that now we have to really empower ourselves to plan ahead of the problem because this shouldn't be happening anymore we shouldn't have to wait for another george floyd to happen for us to actually respond and get angry you know like i hope that what i'm trying to say makes sense no 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 it absolutely does it does we we should we should be able to plan ahead so that none of none of this shouldn't happen and that we shouldn't have to respond as soon as something like this happens we should have people set in place or organization set in place so that this is prevented so we don't have to deal with this anymore um another thing is that uh this this entire we have to recognize that we we are all that we have we can't disagree with people but at the end of the day we all want the same thing cuz i i see it every day we all we all literally want the same exact thing which is for equality for us all but yet we are constantly disagreeing with each other because of how we want to get, want to get it done so if we can't even so if we can't even fix our own our own community then what then what do we have in order to fight back against them nothing we actually have nothing so yeah that's my that's my point thank you i'm <clears throat> i'm just soaking it all in i don't know you all but i'm i'm very proud of your responses i guess that's the the motherly nature thing, I guess, but who it's heavy. Okay, who do we have next? Let's go to Bryson. So for me, um, this whole situation, um, I feel like it's just like just disrespectful and kind of the um the black community. Like uh, Matthew was saying, like, why do we have to wait for another? case of this to happen why do we have to wait for like another Trayvon Martin or like another Mike Brown situation or another George Floyd situation to happen for us to you know come up and raise some type of awareness um so I just feel like it, at this point it's really repetitive and it's just disrespectful that nobody really raises an eye to these things they kind of just sweep it under the rug and just call it a day um and just accept it for what it is which is wrong um and I know like like Gabrielle said like I think we should just really really educate um at a at a much younger age like they're going to have to find out someday so it, it's the sad truth but you just need to you got to figure that out you got to learn that like my first experience was like the whole Trayvon Martin situation I was in 4th grade and it was a young stu uh he was young and that was like the big the big thing so like when I was talking to my parents and everything and that's when they kind of like sat me down it was like Yo, like this is real life. Like this is this is what happens. This is what you you're gonna. Um, hopefully, you don't like this doesn't happen to you. But things like this are gonna happen. You're gonna go through these different experiences in life. So this is what you do. This is how you deal with it. So when I kind of heard how they felt on that and how my father was talking to me as a black man, like yeah, that that raised my awareness a lot. 
And for me, he was always telling me, like, you're going to stand out. Because, I mean, like, I, I'm 6'3", 6'4", 215 pounds, like, just walking around. And he's like, yo, like, the way you present yourself, people, like, people already have these, these uh, thoughts about you. They, they're already thinking something before you, like this whole unconscious bias like they have. So just, you know, present yourself accordingly um, and don't do anything to, to give in to what they want. Like, don't, don't be, don't fit this role, this, uh, this stereotype, like be better than that, be the best that you can be. So just kind of doing that, I, I say so, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, you know, we, we have to have the conversation with you all. It's not an easy conversation. It's not a comfortable conversation. It's definitely a conversation that I have with my son all the time. And he's getting ready to start driving and I'm already fearful, you know, and I've talked to him about, you know, how to make it home. But sadly, following the rules doesn't always mean they get to make it home, you know. So it's definitely something that we have to deal with as, as parents. And I know you all are you know, having to keep your head on the swivel as well and be extra careful in what you do. So thank you for your responses. Uh, next up, we have Richard, and then we'll go to McCall. And then Linda and Valencia, I would like for you guys to chime in on this conversation as well. Go ahead, Richard. Um, me personally, I feel like racism and, you know, the police brutality, they've always been around, right? And they become more of a bigger issue due to social media and the uh, evolution of technology you know now it's being recorded and everything it's become more of an issue and also i feel like times are you know evolving whereas you know back in like the 1960s with the civil rights movement the no disrespect but like you know they were at peace with the actions that were taken but also they didn't see it for what it was you know they'll give them something but they didn't give them the ultimate goal. They accepted the little, like the little bond that they gave. Like now, you know, they passing reform bills and all of that, but they're adding on more, more, more justice needs to be addressed. So they're not just satisfied with the reform bills and the Black Lives Matter, street science, and all of that. They actually want action, they want immediate action. Mm -hmm. And you know, I feel like you know we all should, like as a people, we should all just you know work on bettering ourselves, not by per se always the educational system, but educating ourselves a different way too. Like, you know, going to learn all that other stuff, you know, everything is in, in the textbook. Some stuff may be on YouTube. It may be in an article. You know, everything isn't taught in school. And, you know, rising up to who wears Jordans and everything, but I'm going to college on a scholarship. So we had to rise above and be better as people. You know, they hate they hate to see our excellence and we should continue that. Thank you for that. And next up we have uh, yeah, go ahead. Um well following following up on what Rashad said, I'm six three. So of course they're gonna think me a tall I play basketball, so they don't try and, like, they'll try, they'll do anything in their power to, like, stop you from being great, you know? Like, even with the whole thing with LeBron James, like, who's seen as, like, one of the greatest basketball players ever to play the game. Oh, sounds like we lost you. McCall, we lost you. I think for me, uh, it's not so much as fear. It's just me, you know, enhancing my awareness and being precautious of my surroundings and stuff. And especially because I live right next to a police department. So it was kind of, it's, it's like, okay. Um, but, you know, it, it's other people that are like victims of this, it's like, oh, hold up. We can hear you now. It's It's a bit better. Hold on, I'm gonna try to fix this one for very quick. I'm sorry. Hold up. That's okay. Go ahead and do what you need to do. Let's go to let's go to Justin. I know you're not a panelist, but I would love to hear your thoughts. And then Anthony will be okay. All right. Um, I'll try to I'll try to keep it short. Um, largely just because I mean I don't think there's 
uh, you know what I mean? It's not too much to add of, in terms of reiterating just the, you know, frustration that everyone feels like I'm like, it's, yeah, I mean, okay, let me just start. Um, yeah, so one thing that I do want to say, um, I guess is be a little bit different, um, would be that um, coming from, you know, leaving college campus, um, college campuses can to be a very politically charged kind of atmosphere. And um, yeah, I just kind of want to give a reminder is like, you know, as we're kind of going kind of more into phases of what is becoming a more turbulent kind of showcasing of what we've all kind of already been experiencing to just keep, you know, just, you know, be aware of your surroundings, um, you know, keep your friends close, stay in your communities, um, and just kind of look out for each other, stay safe. Um, like, I know that, like, leaving campus, like, one thing that it just kind of reminds me a lot of, like, around the time when our current president got elected, and how things were kind of very turbulent, so I just kind of wanted to just give a word of, like, um, just kind of look out for each other, stay safe as you go into, you know, your next phase, a lot of you guys going to college, and yeah, just, that's kind of what I wanted to say. Thank you, I appreciate that, and Anthony, what are your thoughts? Okay, so, um, when I was about probably like four, I don't want to get sappy or anything, but when I was really young, um, unfortunately, my dad passed away. So as I was growing up, I was raised by primarily females. So that I wasn't really, you know, interested in sports or anything like that growing up and stuff like that. So now when, well, now that I'm a bit older, I currently attend Charles River Flowers High School. And as you may know, that school is predominantly African-American. So it's, um, and just in other areas in general, it's like when I, you know, introduce myself, everybody always asks me, because I'm, I'm not 6'4 or anything, but I'm pretty tall and, you know, stuff like that. And they always ask me, you know, do you play basketball? Do you play sports? Do you play football? This and that. So, and then I have to tell them, you know, I'm not really interested in sports and stuff like that. And then they're like, oh, well, you should do that. What are you going to do if you don't have sports? Like, what, what are you going to do with your life? All you can do is sports. You know, I've heard that all before. So, and these are from other African-Americans. So, and people don't really want to hear this, especially, you know, the Black community. And I will continue to and forever uplift my community. But we have to start by taking those stereotypes off of us before we tell somebody else to take those stereotypes off of us. So it's like, and even with, um, you know, even with um, the sexuality, black, it's not just black men, of course, but they treat black gay men differently than they treat regular black men. And we have to stop that and like, like um, you know, like what was said, we have to become unified before we try and pull this down at all. You know, we can't be separated to get this done, you know, and just with that, um, you know, the president, I know that's not really the greatest thing to talk about. Just, it's really sad to me that our president, when you have that role in leadership, you carry it the way you do. He's done such childish things. It's just disappointing. And it hurts me more that even, you know, almost all of you guys, you know, I haven't heard, and not all of you guys talk that much, but I'm sure you guys, you know, all of you seem like you would make amazing leaders. And it saddens me to know that I had, I can find, because, you know, I've never met any of you guys before, but I could find amazing leaders in 0.5 seconds in one day than I, you know, than our president now who's been here for, you know, this is his fourth year now. So, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, I don't, I don't listen to any of that negativity and stuff. And it hurts me even more because, you know, people feed off of the president, you know, that's basically, you know, how it works. The, it's a democracy. So, you know, people are going to feed off what the president says. So now that Trump's in leadership, people who are primarily Caucasian, of course, they're going to, since Trump is, you know, he's, 
you know, it's not, he doesn't have the best character and he, or, you know, physically or publicly shows his racism, you know, white people think they can too. So I'm saying, you know, just don't allow that at all. You have to tell, well, you shouldn't have to at all, but let them know what's right and what's wrong. And don't let, please don't let the leadership of Trump or anything like that corrupt your brain or anything like that. And for people who do let it corrupt your brain, at least try to educate them on why they, you know, it might not be the best thing to follow. But yeah, all in all, you know, just I support all of you, the Black community. I'm so, you know, encouraging of us and myself, and I believe that we could do anything we put our mind to. So that's all I can really say about the situation. Thank you, thank you very much. Linda, Valencia, did you guys want to share anything quickly? I know we're way over time, but I, like I said, I think this is an, an important conversation to have. Oh, absolutely. Um, first, I just want to say congratulations to all of you. Um, you are going to be uh, forever a part of a very special graduating class. Um, the graduation class of 2020 will always be celebrated and always be remembered. I'm, I'm sorry and it breaks my heart that you weren't able to celebrate or have the joys that a lot of other um, school uh, classes before you had. But you know what I do want to say is, is this for you guys. I want you to start each day believing in yourself in, and your dreams. Know without a doubt that each of you were made to be great. And I don't want you to forget that. Everything that I have heard to, you know, if there are, you know, leaders that could start a unification of our youth for a better tomorrow, it's every single one of you on this call right now. You are all doing great things, regardless of whether or not you feel as though that going to, to school, continuing in college and getting a degree or not, be just becoming an entrepreneur or picking up a technical trade, whatever it is that you are going to do, I want you to know that I believe in you, that you all are wonderful, and I love everything that I have heard from every single one of you. And what I also want you to do is I, I want you to always be open to change. Not every single person is out to hurt you. Not every single person is out to lift you up but as long as you believe in you nobody will ever stop you regardless you're all beautiful in your own ways and just remember one thing nobody can bring you down always stay above everyone else i agree with with every one of you who said that we should all remain educated. We should educate ourselves. We should know where we come from. We should know where we're going. And if there's anything that we can ever do to support you, please reach out and let us know. Thank you very much, Valencia. Um, I want to piggyback off of what Linda said. Um, you all are amazing. Um, a bunch of amazing leaders and a few of you made the statements of um, changing the narrative by um, stepping out and doing something different. Well, what I want to say is as a mother of four black boys, um, we've had these conversations many, many years. And one of the things that I always tell my boys is be aware, but don't be afraid. You can't go out and be fearful and change the narrative in that way. Because if you go out in fear, then you're looking at everybody as um, somebody that's trying to harm you. And that's not, that's not the case. Um, just as Linda just said, always be open to change because all officers aren't bad. And I'm hearing lately that a lot of people are saying, I don't want to hear that all officers aren't bad. Um, all black men aren't bad either, but you can't be open to one and not the other. You know, just like all black boys aren't bad, all officers aren't bad. Some of them are out to help and um, we have to be open to that. But I want you all to continue to be leaders because you are the ones that can make the change. If you come together 
and get your core groups together and and be um, come up with plans and and lead in that manner, we can see some change for our future. We're we're looking for y'all to help. Like we're trying to help y'all help us at this point. And the things that I've heard today is just I'm I'm just in awe by all of you all. Y'all are amazing. Please don't ever forget that. Continue to do everything that you all are doing. Just as Linda stated, if there's anything that I can ever do for anyone, um, it's a lot of entrepreneurs on here, or aspiring entrepreneurs. If I can help anybody in any way, by all means, please reach out to me. Um, Jamila has all of my information. Um, and again, I, I wish you all well in all your future endeavors. And I pray that things get a little, little um, easier for you with, with everything that's going on. It's not going to last forever. Right. Thank you for that. All right, Anthony, we have two more questions and then we're going to wrap up this, this conversation. We came to learn and you all are teaching tonight. So, so thank you. Anthony, over to you. Got it. Okay. So um, is there anyone or um, anybody you know that you would like to thank or shout out? And this is for anyone. Go ahead, Jayla. Hello. Can you all hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I would first like to shout out to my mom and my dad because I know they've put up with a lot and I know they're so glad that I'm done with the first part of my education because like I said, we've been through it all. I would also like to shout out to my teachers who've been here every step of the way. It's some teachers that actually, I, I can't remember who said it earlier, but you know, it's, you know when you have a teacher who cares who takes their job serious and you form that bond with teachers like I still talk to my teachers from middle school elementary school because they were rooting for me they were waiting to see the final ending of this chapter and they can't wait to see the young woman that I've turned into because um when I was younger I know they like I can't believe Jayla's like this now I can't believe Jayla's acting like this now because they see the growth and they see the change so I just really shout them out and shout out to my friends too because they've pushed me and we we finally made it <laughs> and we done and shout out to the class of 2020 shout out to you all because i know you all been through a lot of trials and tribulations so i just want to say congratulations to you all during this pandemic through yes 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 all right Deja Long, next I definitely want to give a shout out to my family, my immediate family, because without them, I wouldn't be the person that I am today, especially with the support. I want to give a shout out to all of my sport coaches. Like, they definitely played a huge part in me growing to the person that I am today. Like, I learned so many things from them just with leadership and motivation, you know. And I definitely want to give a shout out to my friends because they got me through high school. Like, without them, I wouldn't even want to be at school today. So I definitely want to give a major shout out to my friends and my coaches and my family. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, Dianne? So I would like to start by shouting out my parents. Of course, there were a lot of nights that I spent staying up crying over assignments and different things. Because my school just it put me through a lot. <laughs> uh, I would also like to shout out my mentor, Alana, who was there with me every step of the way through college applications, through internships, through volunteer programs, everything, and just for her constantly pushing me to be better and holding me accountable for my actions. And then, of course, I would like to shout out my friends for helping me get through high school, uh, just for them being themselves, and then always pushing me to be a better person because without them I feel like I wouldn't have been as educated as I was um, intellectually and just personally I wouldn't have found out who I am today so just yeah and then shout out to the entire class of 2020 I'm proud of everyone and keep up the good work and where the next generation is going to change and bring about change yeah. so yeah that's right. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, McCall, you want to go? You want to chime in and shout somebody out? I know your mom is listening. Oh, uh, wait, can you hear me now? I can, yep. Okay, I changed to my phone, so it should be able to work now. Okay. Uh, well, since my mom is in the vicinity, <laughs> I'm going to thank my mom, especially because, uh, well, I can't say she did it by herself, but she's putting in, like, about 80% of the work. But, uh, yeah, special shout-out to my mom, my dad, um, all the male uh, role models and figures I had in my life throughout high school, some of my mentors from church, my coaches for basketball, um, especially my TV teacher who taught me uh, – who's actually helping me with my major in school, which is communications. And he's helped me, you know, get to that level of where I can be, you know, elite as a freshman against the, the seniors and the juniors in college. Um, shout out my grandparents. Uh, they've been teaching me a bunch of stuff about school, especially since they're college oriented. So they know everything about college and how to get to college, uh, to stay focused on that stuff. And uh, yeah, 2020, even though we didn't go out, as we wanted it to, you know, but uh, we still did it. So, shout out to 2020, and yeah, that's it for me. All right, wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Who's next, Bria? And I'm, everyone will get to answer this question because this is we're wrapping up here. So go ahead, Bria. Who you want to shout out? I I definitely want to shout out my whole entire village because um, I really realized how many people really had my best interests. A lot of people had my. Um, I had their support and I really genuinely appreciate that. I definitely want to shout out both my parents because high school and school in general has just been a journey. Like we have been through the ringer <laughs> completely. So I definitely want to shout them out. I want to shout out all of my friends, my small friend group, because I literally came in with the same people at the beginning and I left with them. So um, I'm genuinely thankful to have the friends that I have. Um, I'm thankful for those teachers that cared about me, that actually had my best interest at heart, because if you notice, a lot of teachers don't really care. So I'm definitely thankful to have that experience and to have gone through that. So I'm, that's, those are the people that I'd like to shout out. Okay, thank you. Gabrielle? Okay, so I would like to first shout out um, my mom and my grandma. Um, like everybody said, they've been my rock. Like, even if, like, I push them away, they push uh, right back, and they're just like, oh yeah, we're not leaving you. Um, and they definitely, even though I didn't want to hear it, they're just like, oh yeah, this too shall pass with everything that I do um, and everything. So I just want to shout them out because they're some of my biggest supporters. I want to shout out my dad. I want to shout out my guidance counselor because not like guidance counselors are really there for you, but she was there for me. Like I even had her number, text, like every time I was going through something, I would text her. Um, yeah, and I want to shout out my friend group because, like, even though we've been through some times, they've stuck by me and everything. Um, and yeah, shout out to the class of 2020 because, yeah, it was it was definitely a rough ride. So <laughs> it was really good that we made it through. And I know we can make it through a lot of things. This just shows our strength yeah. and our resilience. Absolutely. Rashard, yeah. who do you want to shout out? Um, I want to shout out my mother. And you know my whole village, you know, especially my mother, because you know she always scream at me about my work and all that. You know, I'm a personal fan of you know getting everything done before you get home. But you know, just constantly checking up my father, always checking up on my grades and stuff like that. Uh, my coach, uh, my coach play a big role in you know keeping me motivated, keeping me on my toes. Uh, everybody who supported me, I loved it even more. Uh, people who doubted me because you know. You gotta outwork that ninety nine percent to be that one percent. So uh just keeping that in the back of my mind and achieving my goal. Just I just wanna thank everybody and shout out to the class of twenty twenty. You know, we did it. We all had our different roles, our different paths, different trials and tribulations, but we all, you know, achieved our end goal. Yeah, so. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Tamar. I want to shout out my mom because, you know, she's a single parent and I have no siblings. So it's just me and her and she raised me by herself, but also with my village, all my aunties. I only have two auntie, two blood aunties, but I got a lot of, 
of the aunties that always is there for me and always check up with me and make sure that I'm good. So I just want to thank them and especially my mom because when this distant learning started, I just thought this was my time to live my best life. I was just not doing anything on this distance learning stuff. So I just want to say shout out to her and everybody else who's like ever shown any support to me. And then one more thing I wanted to say, which is like, we all, well, most of us on here should be like 18. So I just want to make sure that y'all vote and stuff so we can actually have change. So if y'all complaining about um, Donald Trump and like all the other things that's going on we have to make sure we vote because this is like our first year well this is my first year that I can vote and if you ain't vote recently then you could vote in November but yeah that's it thank you Tamar Deja Lone who would you like to shout out I did my shout out already I um gave a shout out to my mom you did. and with the circles. I mean, <laughs> <it's here. laughs> Matthew uh Shout out to the family for holding it down for me. Uh, shout out to mom and dad for letting me pursue this dream of mine, which is pretty much uh, being a sound, gen sound engineer and music producer. Because uh, usually a lot of people, like, they like sticking to traditional jobs and they don't really allow, like, a lot of creative minds to, like, actually be creative within their own, like, field. So shout out to them for letting me do that. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, thank you. Bryson? So I would like to... Uh, Shout out really all of my uh, family, all of my family members, um, all of my church members, just everyone who's really supported me um, throughout the journey, giving me words of encouragement, um, even in times like sometimes like I was just going through some things and they'll just give me some words of encouragement. They'll do some things for me here and there. Um, but here recently, like a really, really, really special shout out to my mother um, over this last school year, just being persistent. Um, when it came to the whole college process, like it's days where, cause I, I played basketball as well. So like it's days where I just wanted to come home from work or from basketball practice and just not really do anything. Like just go in my room, lock up in my room until the next day. So just for her being persistent and um, having my best interest at heart, I would say that that's, that's my special shout out. Wonderful, thank you. All right, did I get everybody? Did I miss anyone? Last call for shout outs. Okay, we are so over time, y'all, but <laughs> this was a good conversation. Thank you so much for hanging in there um, with me. I appreciate you being candid and honest and open and respectful. You all are very articulate in your, your feelings. And um, we're going to, this is being recorded. And like I said, we'll follow up with everybody on how we communicate this information and make sure it gets shared out to the masses. So thank you all so much. I wish you well on your next journey, whatever that may be. I follow most of your parents on social media, so I'm sure I'm going to see you in some form or fashion, right? So, and they have my contact information. We're all about young people here. So if we can help you, please let me know. If not, our community partners are here to help you as well. Continue the journey. You all did it. It wasn't easy, but you made it to the next chapter. So you should be very proud of yourself. So thank you all for joining us again tonight. Let's give each other a round of applause. And you guys have a great night and be safe. And you know, once we're able to get back outside, maybe we can bring you guys all together and we can meet in person. You just never know if you guys are still looking. So once again, thank you so very much and keep your heads held high. Thank you for the opportunity. Bye. 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 Please be safe. Go. Okay. I think I got the picture. All right. Thank you. I look rough. Hit control. Command shift.